Alright, here we go. Here we go. sure that everything is where it needs to be everybody yep good we got this muted fantastic we're live yes okay now let's get chat up I, i'm gonna bring on that third monitor tomorrow i think i really yep. all right so what we're gonna do to start is we're just gonna kind of Play around with some basic shapes and see if we can't just kind of get warmed up, get the fingers going, get the brain going, uh, see what we can do here. So we're just going to play around with some basic, basic, basic characters real fast. And we're just going to see, just kind of get warmed up. That's way I can describe it. So we'll start here. And we'll just do some very, very basic uh, characters. Maybe some heads. Let's go with a darker gray. Good. I'll take it. All right. Here. Fantastic. Make some mouse. And then what we'll do is after we've warmed up a little bit, we'll sort of, uh, I've got an idea for maybe like a deep sea picture or maybe not deep sea, but like a, a boat, like a stormy boat picture, I think. So I want to, I want to play with that and see what we can come up with. But I really want to experiment, I think, with making it look sort of, um, like paper if that makes sense almost like um like a book i think is what i want to do i don't know we'll see no okay <sighs> gotta get warmed up good that'll work and for eyes of course we can do a whole myriad of eyes here we can do one eye we can do two eyes we could do Go. Oops. Eight in there. Nope. Good. All right, cool. Then what we'll do is we'll play with the. Yeah, we'll play with this. I dump it in here. I want to do, I think I want to do some more sort of like unique characters today. Um, but I'm not sure how I want to do it yet. I want to experiment on something. I want to see if we cut the top half of these eyes off at a 40. Let's try 30. What would this look like? I honestly don't know. Huh, and then we'd have to cut the shade as well. Or the shade, if you did the shade right, it could actually act as an eyebrow. Which might be interesting. But we'll just go like this for now. Alright, I'll go in here. We'll drop it in. Come down. Here. Go. Cool. So you get to where this can sort of be a very, very quick process, right? If Like if you wanted it to be. And it's just one way to do this. I mean, there, there's multiple ways to do this. It's just one way. Um, what we'll do is we'll give him a neck. And we'll go with the same color for now. Send it to the back. And then we'll come here. There we go. Spread it out. That's all we're going to try to do is shade under that chin. Yeah, fantastic. Cool. Then we'll take this, slide it down. Nice. Come in here. This is usually how I might like warm up or just just get not only get my brain moving, but get just my fingers moving. Sometimes when you haven't drawn, you know, for a little bit, you can sort of get stiff or get sort of, you know, bent on it. Let me check something here. Okay, yeah, that's working. So 
we got this little head here. And again, this is just for fun. I mean, but you could use this for something. It could go like we have the other heads that we do. Wait, where are those? I think they're under 2018 bases or something we called them. Yeah. Oh, like these here, right? These are all just different variations of like faces and heads and things like that. Um, might actually put that out there. <clears throat> Go into here. Maybe we'll do some animation today. I don't know. Okay, good, good, good. All right, cool. So we'll do um. I think we'll, yeah. <clears throat> so let's get rid of it. We'll just move this over for now. <clears throat> Open. Hey, bud, how's it going, man? <clears throat> I'm just getting warmed up. Just making little faces and stuff. How you doing today, man? Thank you for the host, bud. So I have, like, these are sort of my sketches right here. Where I sort of play around with different uh, styles and things like that. And I'll, I'll sort of just make random faces and whatnot. And, um, yeah. Just getting warmed up this morning. I want to make a sort of a sea, like a nautical scene, I think. Like, I want to do something that's going to be different. Hey, Adam White, how you doing over there on YouTube? Thanks for stopping in. We're just getting warmed up, getting going. Let's try. Okay, let's do it. We'll save this to this. And then we'll clear this out. So I want to do sort of a nautical scene. I want to do a very rough ocean. <clears throat> and I want to do a boat in the middle of that ocean. And then I want to do an island in the distant background. Right? On the way around. Funeral. Gotcha, man. Gotcha. Well, good luck with that, dude. Definitely good luck with that, buddy. Yeah, my um, my um, one of my wife's aunts passed away a couple days ago. So kind of the same thing. We're trying to figure out who, what, where, when. You know, all that stuff. So I feel you, buddy. Good luck, man. <clears throat> Alright, so I would I want to experiment and I'm not sure how to do it. I want to experiment with doing like paper cutouts. You know what I mean? Like almost like a, uh like a book. You know how you get like those books where you'll have like the it almost looks like paper in a way? I don't know how to explain it. I want to see if I can pull that look off. Yeah, I appreciate it, man. It you know it's life, right? We unfortunate truths of life <laughs> but we get through it here we go we'll go here we'll go in here here we go go let's play with I think first, I don't know if I want to do like a heavy outline or how I want to handle this. I don't know if I want to do, I don't know, I don't know. Let's let's start with this and then we'll kind of go from there. Let's give it a random color for now. Hey, Mix of Chill Zone, thank you for the host over there, I appreciate that. Yeah. <laughs> no thanks, Adam. But yeah, man, good luck with that dead bird. I, I, I'll be thinking about you guys. Alright, um, so what I want to do, I think we'll make some random waves first. Yeah. You been drawing anything, man? I saw your post about, like, people recommending you for, uh, sick stuff, so have you been, like getting stuff done or you've been creating anything cool or how's it going man right gotcha I've actually been taking less commissions I sort of got to the point where I wanted to focus more on my own personal styles and stuff and I sort of wanted to play with a bit more learning if that makes sense, you know? So I've been... But see, I also... I don't do it full-time. So I can afford not to. You know what I mean? But... So for me, it's sort of turned into... I'm, I'm still doing them here and there. But I'm really trying to focus on growth and learning at this point. 
because I was spending so much time on commissions. I really wasn't, I really wasn't doing anything other than, hey, draw this. You know what I mean? Yeah, exactly. And, and so it was one of those, I really need to spend some time on myself to make sure that uh, I'm getting my own personal growth. You know what I mean? So I decided I was going to take a step back and we were going to kind of play with that a bit. You know, and then to boot, my stuff is very niche. It's very, it, it has a certain appeal, right, to certain people. It's not going to be for everybody. Right. Yep. And that's, I started to feel that, dude. Because I was just constantly grinding away at, like, commissions, and it was like, ugh, you know? And don't get me wrong, I'm appreciative of it. It's just, you you get to a point where you you start to hit your head against the wall because you don't feel like you're growing anymore, you know? Because you know, I mean, I think you could relate to this, dude. When you're doing commissions, you're being paid to do a very specific style and or picture, right? So you know what they want. So you don't really, at least I don't, I don't know if you do, I don't experiment when I'm doing commissions. I just make what it is they're looking for and then I, you know, go on to the next one. You know what I mean? And so it's it's one of those, like, it sort of can lead to that point of you're, you're not really pushing your boundaries anymore, which can be a little dangerous. So... But see, I'm also fortunate I don't do, you know, the stuff full time. So I can afford to take a step back and kind of reevaluate and and then get back into it when I'm ready, which is cool. I'm very appreciative of that. All right, so I want to do some more. Did you? I don't know if you saw this piece, dude. Did you see this piece I did yesterday? I do a lot of emotes and things and people come to me for that style. So it's just me blasting them out. Right, exactly. Did you see the scene study I did right here? We did this yesterday. Um, I was really, really happy with this one. I did a, um, I wanted to do a very sort of science fiction slash cyberpunk sort of, uh, vibe to it, right? I wanted, like, really colorful. And so what we did is we did this sort of a space scene, and I used a lot of gradient to really, really draw the image out. And then I did the speeder here. And my favorite part about this whole image is right here, the dust and the trail behind the speeder. Yeah. Like, I was really happy with this. I was really happy with this because I've really been trying to like experiment with different things, you know? And so I was really happy with the way that turned out. Yeah, yeah, it's cool, right? I was really happy with it, man. And I used a lot of gradients in this, which I don't normally do. That's a very new thing for me. So I was pretty pleased with it. Pretty pleased. And that's kind of what I'm talking about right there, stuff like that. I want to get into doing stuff like that, you know? Right. Yeah, noise. And I didn't do any noise in the trail. Um, and we might. Uh, I did, there's only a few places I did noise. I did a little noise here in the sun, and you can sort of see it right here. It's very faint, but it's in there. And then I did a little noise in, I believe, these planets? Yes, just a little bit of noise in there. But see, what I'm doing, man, is I'm building on them, you know? It's like I do a little bit, I do a little bit, I do a little bit, and I'm sort of just um, building up as I go. I'm just trying to learn overall. Right. Yep. Yep. Exactly. Exactly. And, and I like that because it's... It, it's mine, but at the same time, it's, you know, it's something just a little different, which is what I want. Okay, so what I want to do here, and, and these colors are not going to be the final colors, obviously. I just, I'm trying to, like, pin down what I want this to look like. And so I want this to almost look like those old nautical pictures you see with, like, this, the hyper-huge waves that don't look realistic, you know? Sort of those really, really big overdone waves. And then what I want to do is I want to sketch this out. I want to have an island sort of back here. I'm thinking somewhere in this back part of the scene over here in the corner. So what we'll do is we'll kind of come in here and we'll see if we can't sketch this in a little bit. So we'll just kind of 
I don't know. We'll do, we'll do something here. Hello, Space Cat. Hey, Deviant, how you doing, man? Good to see you, buddy. Oh, um, Thanks for the host, man. Host. I appreciate y'all coming out and supporting. I really do. Thank you. So if y'all don't know, I've really been firing up YouTube lately. I um, I've been getting really, really back on that. Um, that's another thing I've been doing. Uh, Deadbird is I'm really trying to focus on stuff like that, getting YouTube going, and and really just hitting it hard this year. Yeah. Yeah. So I want to do this, and I don't want to do an obvious lighthouse, but I don't know how big I want the island. Let's let's just go here for now, right? And then what I want to do is let's do a lighthouse that sort of comes up out of the, out of the, uh, like here. It was funny, I had somebody come in yesterday when I was streaming, and they were like, you don't sketch? <laughs> and I was like, occasionally? But as, as a general rule, no. I said it's sort of a bad habit, though. I would not recommend it unless you really, really can visualize what the heck it is you're trying to do. You know what I mean? If, if you can really see it, you don't need it, in my opinion. But if, you, if, you, if you're having a hard time visualizing what it is you're trying to do, then yes, I would recommend getting into sketching. You know, and trying to figure out your flow and how you work, because it can be daunting. Well, see, that's the thing, right? And that's what I tell people. In fact, you are you can do that. You can just get in here and have fun. Like you don't really need to think about it. I think I think art can be overthought, if that if that makes sense, right? Because I think sometimes some people, hey Sammy, what you doing, buddy? I think sometimes people put too much preparation and too much thought into what they're trying to do, right? Instead of putting creativity into it. And I've always told people that. I feel like some people they it's almost like when people cook, right? Some people, some people. They, they get in the kitchen to cook, right? And they overthink it to the point of screwing everything up. And I feel like art has a lot to, is a lot like that. Like, sometimes you just got to create, you know? You have to have, be happy with the sketch before you ink, right? And see, that's your process, and that's cool. Me, I just go. I just make. Yep. And then, you know, I mean, usually it works out, so I'm not... Do you ever use references, guys? Because if you do, I found a really awesome tool you might want to know about. <clears throat> I'm trying to get into digital painting too, Dead Bird. I've been doing it on my iPad, and I'm I'm trying to get into digital painting. It's it's wrapping my head around it. I'm going slow with it, but I'm just taking it step by step. So check this out. So I found this piece of software that is free and it works amazing. I'll give you an example. It's called Pure Ref. So when you open it, it literally just looks like a black screen. There's nothing fancy about it, okay? Well, check this out. This is super cool if you guys don't know what this is. Let's go into there and we'll grab we'll grab the stuff out of my um we'll grab the stuff out of my slideshow. Just as the example here. So we'll come in here, we'll go to my slideshow. Now watch what happens when you drag images into this. All right, it doesn't store the images in the physical file, but what it does is it categorizes them like this. So I think you'll be able to quickly see how cool this is. Basically, you can pull a bunch of reference images and you can pull them into something like this and then you can scroll around, you can focus on them, you can move around and you can have indefinite amount of images in here. But what's cool is the file size stays small because it doesn't actually save the images in the software. It just saves the picture, a link to it, back to wherever you brought it in from, okay? So this file is only like 300K in size, and I can keep adding to this. I can go grab more files and dump them in here. But what it allows you to do is quickly look at like references of things you're, like if you had a bunch of, if you were trying to paint a forest, for example, you could put a bunch of them in here, and then you could just scroll through them and look at them like this, right? Pretty cool software. 
and then you can just move it around and you can keep importing and you can make this thing exactly dead bird exactly yep <laughs> that's what it's all about man you got to find that free stuff yep super cool and it's 100 percent free so i'd recommend trying it out if you guys want a solution to something that costs money give it a go instead of cluttering your artboards 100 percent deviant and what's cool about that is you can save like let's say you you put in a bunch of files and you arrange them and you can move them around where you want right what you do is you get them in there, you save that little file and you can name it whatever you want. And then you can just double click that little 300k file anytime you want to open it. 100% I agree dude, right? Like why pay for something if you can, I'm with you. So anyways, it's called Pure Ref. Um, check it out if you want. You can just Google it. That's the name. It's super easy. Super, super easy. I'm always looking for stuff and I actually found that from... Um, there were a couple, um, that's it, man, right? There were a couple uh, art streamers on DLive, where I'm restreaming to, that were using it. And I was like, wait, what is that? And they were talking about it, and I was like, holy smokes. I said, that is cool. And so I, I, I jumped on that quick once I saw it, because that is pretty incredible. Hey, what's up, Sammy? What you doing, buddy? You want to come down? Come on. Come on. Come on. There you go. Come on. There you go. Good boy. Like a big old kitty cat. Did you check that? Yes, I did. Um, And I'm going to use it a little bit probably on the iPad when I do use it. Because my, I, my iPad is the only iOS device I have. That's it. Like my phone is Android. Everything is um, everything's Android other than my iPad. So I'll probably have to use it there when I use it. So on there, I've been using a lot of Procreate. Trying to get comfortable with that. And um, I'm liking Procreate. The problem is, buddy, come on. You gotta, you gotta, you can't keep your big butt right there, man. Um, the thing with Procreate is it's literally a painting tool. You know what I mean? It's not, it's not like, you know? So it, it's, it's a different style of art, but I'm, I'm getting it. I'm grasping it. Hey, Dragonclaw, how you doing, buddy? Thanks for coming out, man. Thank you for that host. Thank you, thank Welcome, you. Everyone. Use it, okay. We did a weird robot last night. I don't know if you saw this. I went a little weird with this one because I was like, okay, you know what? I really want to play around with perspective. Perspective is something that I'm weak on. I was talking to you about this, uh, Dead Bird, actually. And so what I did was, let me turn off the background here. All right, let's turn it to like a, a bolder color so you can sort of see it. And we'll turn off that texture. So the hands here and this leg in the front, I really tried to dive into perspective. And I tried to get that just right so that it looked good. You know what I mean? Because perspective is something that I've, I've always sort of, with digital, I've lived in sort of that flat 2D sort of world with pixel art and with vector art. So I'm trying to come out of that mold a little bit and do some more sort of uh perspective stuff so i'm i'm learning i'm getting there little by little you know and um eventually it'll it'll i'll be comfortable and happy with it right now it's still sort of a, a struggling process for me but i'm i'm learning i want it smaller than that i want this thing way back here i'm thinking like this yeah like way way off here in the, in the distance yep i like that I'm trying to stage this a little bit Okay, right there. Now, let's do a little bit smaller waves back here and see what this looks like. Do you ever take time and do that, man? Do you ever just sketch for fun? Or do you find it hard to find time to do that? I was going to say, do you ever sketch for just fun? Or do you find it hard to find time to do it? Like, is it something you... I'm always curious about that. Like, people that do creative stuff for, like, commissions and freelance and stuff. Like, yeah, sometimes, right? Oh, we're going to be doing something in the Discord, too, folks. Um, we're going to start it. We're going to do a weekly drawing challenge, for those who don't know. Um, so what I'm going to do is on Wednesdays, we're going to post the topic. 
and then a week, so a Wednesday after, we'll we'll kind of show everyone drawings that want to have it shown, and we're gonna we'll show it on stream. So we're gonna have people um of any art type. I mean, it could be like for Dragon Claw, it could be chainmail. For um, you know, I don't care what the art medium is. I don't care if it's traditional, digital. I don't care what it is. Um, it's gonna be open to everybody. Uh, I don't care if it's crayons and paper, right? And so we're just gonna do. We're gonna start easy with some small topics. And then we'll just kind of ramp up from there um, and just see how it goes. So it should be fun. Anybody that wants to join in is welcome to. Um, should be a good time, I hope. And we're not going to, it's not for fun. It's not, no one's getting, winning anything. It's not, it's for fun. We're not doing it for a competition. There's no winners. You know what I mean? It's, it's just to promote art and allow people to grow. If people want criticism, they can certainly ask for it, you know. Yeah, I just want it to be a place of, of art, of all types, and all skill levels, you know? Because I think my daughter wants to do it, she's probably going to put her stuff in there. So we'll take pictures of her drawings and put them in there, you know? And it's going to be just a fun sort of... And I think we'll start with, like, smaller words, like maybe, you know... Uh, we'll start with, like, you know, I don't know, we'll start with small stuff. We'll pick a, a small word and we'll go from there. Yeah, it'll be good fun. We're going to start it this Wednesday. This Wednesday. And we're going to start with just one word. One word things, right? You know? And we're going to see how it goes. And we'll we'll kind of, we'll go from there. We'll go from there. Hey, George, thank you for the follow. I don't do follow for follows, bud. Not until I've seen your content. I can certainly stop by sometime and see what you're all about. And if I like your content, I'll be glad to follow. But I believe that people should follow someone because they really enjoy their content. I appreciate it, though. Fish. I mean, we may do a fish deviant. Um, it's sort of hard to tell at this point. Um, but I do want to, you're, you're on the right point. Like, I want to start with just, like, one, I want to do uh, one word things to start with. Like, fish, dog, cat, things like that. Absolutely. I think that's exactly how I want to begin it. And then we'll, we'll kind of go from there and see how people feel. Because I don't want to overwhelm people, right? Alright, so let's go back here. We'll do one more layer. And these are not the final colors. We may use some of these as the final colors, but I don't know yet. Maybe we'll go behind the island with this one. Yes, that's exactly what we'll do. We'll come down, we'll come down, we'll go here. And then what we'll do... Gotta run, bro. Hey, no worries, man. Thank you for coming in. Good luck with everything you gotta deal with, dude. Uh, thinking about you guys and hope it all goes well, man. Have a great day. I'll see you later, man. Okay, so I like this. It has the perspective that I want. I like what's going on here. All right, cool. <clears throat> All right. So yeah, this is start. I, it may be hard for you guys to kind of see where I'm going with this, but I have a visual now of what I want to do. So we will begin sort of hammering this out. And I want the island, I don't really want the island to show a lot of, uh, I want the island to almost appear like a dark image in the background, right? I don't want the island to have like a ton of detail and a bunch of color and stuff. I want it to just sort of be, I don't know, just sort of a dark image in the horizon, right? But we'll kind of go like this. What does the top of lighthouse look like? Is it triangular? Is it a small triangle? I don't even know. <laughs> I think we'll do something like this. That, that sort of makes sense, right? Yeah, that makes sense. So we'll go there with it. What about there? Yeah, 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 yeah. We'll play with this, okay. So that's going to make sense. And then we'll do some sort of a glow up there. Um, I just don't know how I want to do it yet. But we'll, we'll do something. So that it obviously looks like a lighthouse. All right. And that'll be the far back perspective. And we may even go smaller than this. Because I'm really thinking about having this really, really off in the distance. Sort of like this. Like off to one side of the image. Because I want to put 
a ship. Some have a point, some are flat, yeah. You think I know? We have so many freaking lighthouses around here where I live, but it's one of those weird things. I don't think I've ever stopped to just look at one. You know what I mean? All right, so what I'm thinking about is I want to do the boat. I think the island is going to go all the way to the back, actually. Yeah, I think we'll have all the waves in front of it. Because now that I'm looking at it, I want to do the boat. Isn't it weird when you wake up with a vision of what you want to draw, but you don't really know what you want to draw? <laughs> yeah, I'm on. I'm in North Carolina, Deviant. So I'm on the coast of North Carolina, um, down near the Outer Banks. So we're right on the beach. Yep. Yep. Oh, we're sitting on 70 degree weather, 60 degree weather. You know, funny. You got family in Maine. Oh, okay, right on. Never been to Maine. Uh, I grew up in Buffalo when I was a kid. I grew up in upstate New York. Um, and get all that for a while. Never went to Maine, though. I, I have a, a friend that moved to Maine with his girlfriend because her family was from there. But I've never been up to visit him. Um, don't really know much about it. Alright, cool. So now is where we're going to start sort of working on colors. Now, how weird do we want to get with these colors? Because we went real weird with the... Uh, the other picture. Only been there a couple times. You ever been down in this region, North Carolina regions at all, or no? Pretty nice here. the 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 big area, the big problem down here where I live is it's a tour trap. Um, it's all the beaches of North Carolina, like uh, Kitty Hawk, Nags Head, uh, Duck, Corolla, all those. It's like a tour trap, man. People come in here, and it it, it just blows up. Atlanta, Florida, yep. Yeah. Um, people here, man, people come from all over the place to rent these houses down here and they, they stay for a week and, I mean, I, I don't know. I wouldn't come here if I didn't live here. Let me put it that way. It probably sounds terrible, but it's true. Like, because it's one of those things, like, if you're a tourist, you're going to see some really cool stuff you've probably not seen before or you've not seen in your area. But, like, when you live here, it's like, man, you know, we see it every day. So, I don't know. All right, so I like the placement of this. <clears throat> now, for the sky, I don't know what I want to do with the water. I don't know if I want to make the water, if I want to do a really abstract sort of color or if I want to do a natural sort of color. Let's let's play with natural. So what we'll do is, oh, I, I left that in there. That image, need to get that out. Oh yeah, oh yeah. We we get them every year. Um, so we've got two generators. We have um, all that stuff. You know, we have a storm cache, and um, we we get pretty lucky here where we don't generally get too much. I mean, we get some really bad wind. I mean, we may get like eighty to hundred mile an hour winds for you know a couple hours, and we'll get a lot of rain. Rain is the work part of a hurricane that most people don't understand. Is the, the rain level, the water levels from hurricanes are so high because of the flooding that comes in. Because most people don't, when the hurricanes are coming, they push water inland, right? So it causes all the rivers and streams and everything to rise. Well, then the rain that comes is ridiculous. So not only is everything flooded and saturated, the water causes more, the rain, and then you have flooding everywhere, which is a big problem. And then when you have the flooding, trees... They get loose in the ground. Their roots get loose, and that's when the wind knocks them over. So that's one of the biggest threats of a hurricane. Very rarely do we see major structural damage from the hurricane itself. It's generally from the water and from the, the, the trees and the things that get loose and they blow into stuff. Usually. Now, tornadoes do spawn in hurricanes, so that can be another threat, but yeah. Sort of depends on where you're at, you know? Okay, let's get a... Yep. But see, on the flip side of that, we've not had any snow at all this year. So, we rarely get it. Which, I guess you could look at that as good or bad.
see, and I, I see. I grew up in Buffalo, man. So we we were used to snow, and here we just don't get it. Ah, uh, yep. So I grew up in Buffalo as a kid, and then we moved to Virginia, and then we moved to North Carolina when I was a kid. So I've been in this part of the world for. 20 years now, I'd say. 20? 20, 20 years? Something like that? I don't know. It's been a while. I want to do a gradient here. Never been to Utah. The furthest west I've ever been was uh, West Virginia? Never been any further west than that. Always wanted to, just haven't, just haven't done it. Maybe one day. We've talked about with my daughter. We've talked about doing like a, a road trip at some point. You know, taking like two weeks and just doing a really long road trip with my daughter. Maybe just going around and see like different things. But I don't know. Something we've got to plan if we want to do it. We talked about it, but that's about as far as it's gotten. Okay, let's go. We're going to copy this style for right now, just so we can sort of use that as a spring point, right? So what we'll do is we'll come here and we'll darken this. So we'll take this first one, make it slightly darker at the top. I think we're going to add some textures in here too, don't worry. But I'm trying to create almost a paper cutout effect at the same time, which I'm not 100% sure it'll it'll give that vibe. And we may add some texturing in here, but I like where it's going so far. But we're going to roll with it. Is Space Cat's head round like a cylinder or is it a block? I think it's round. Well, it's, it's more rounded rectangle. So it's in between, Deviant. It's like... It's a rounded rectangle, is what I use to make the shape, but it's it the the edges are very slightly in. Very slightly. Very slightly. You know, first person asked that. <laughs> he was real? Rounded rectangle. It's cause he's weird. Okay. Yes, exactly. Yep, like a dice. How does this look for water? I mean, obviously we've got some detailing to do and stuff. Do you guys like the general gist of it? I do, but I think it needs some tweaking. And I can control the distance like this. All right. Okay. I've been trying to use gradings more, man. Because it's one of those things, like, it was always a weak point for me because I never really did it. So I'm trying to sort of backtrack and trying to get into gradient usage. But I don't want to overdo it at the same time. Right? Now, for the sky, I think I want to change the colors up a bit. And I want to add some details in here into the waves. Because I'd really like to make this almost look like a storybook. Yeah. Because you know how in a storybook or like a paper pop-out book, you would see the depth between the paper or the... You know what I mean? Because this would be really cool to animate. Like have the waves sort of doing this. You know what I mean? It'd be pretty cool. Take this. Thank you for the ice cream. Now I want to do something completely different here. Let's do. Thank you for the ice cream. Let's do something completely different for the sky. Hey, Thank DZ, what's up, buddy? Cream. Thanks for the ice cream over there on D Live. How are you? How are things going? Let's do like this. 
All right, cool. Now, the, where this scene's going to go is we're going to put a boat in here. And I think we're going to have the boat somewhere in this region. We'll just kind of throw in a quick shape. And see, what I want to do is, obviously, that's not a boat. But we're going to have it somewhere in here. And I don't really know what kind of boat yet. I don't know if, I think we're going to do sort of a, not really old school, but we'll do something neat. I'm doing good, man. Just kind of doing some drawing today. I sort of wanted to play around. We did this yesterday with a scene study. We did a sort of a, a science fiction sort of uh, cyberpunk inspired uh, scene. And then we drew a, where's that little robot? We did a little evil robot, dude. There he is. We drew this guy. Well, good to see you. Thanks for coming by, buddy. Have fun in class. Gotta straighten all these out. The sunset one? Well, you know, it's funny. That was actually a lot of the inspiration for it, Deviant. Was I wanted to do sort of a... You know... That... Living in that sort of vein, man. Thank you, DZ. I appreciate it, man. Good luck in school today. Um, I wanted to go sort of in that direction. Like a sort of a... You know... Desert sort of... Space environment with the speeder. Right. Yep. And the trees were an experiment. Yep. And I was really happy with the, the dust back here. The dust and the streak. It sort of helped. And this turned out really cool. The engine itself. Turned out really, really cool. The way it has that glow on it. Yeah. I was happy with it. There's a lot of little details on the speeder too. Yep. Good fun. <laughs> well, I'm glad to hear it, dude. You know, that's the thing, man. It's like, I've really... We were talking about this right before you got here, I think. Is I've really sort of focused this year. I want to really continue to grow and learn. So my goal this year is to do things I don't normally do with art. And start learning and growing. So... The things like that are things that I don't normally... Great, and I really want to to push myself this year into, you know, growth, personal growth, and doing things like that. And it's challenging because I don't really know. I don't really know what I'm doing, you know, when I do it. So it's more. It, it can be a little scary at first because it's like, oh, okay, what if this doesn't turn out? But you know, that's really the process of it. Yeah, man, go for it. I'd love to see it. We're going to, um, I'm going to post the word here soon for the weekly challenge. Probably, I mean, probably, I'll probably wait till Wednesday, but we're going to post something. And, uh, I'm looking forward to that too. And I like the idea of keeping it open to all styles, right? Let people just do whatever it is they're comfortable with. Mm-hmm. Yep. It's fun, man. I love flat. Okay, so let's take this guy and let's do a gradient on it. So what I want to do is I want to copy this over here to keep it as an asset. You'll see me do this a lot. If I'm getting ready to make major changes to something, okay, what I'll generally do... Hey, DZ, what's up, man? Over there on YouTube, too. Um, I'll copy something out. So if I'm getting ready to make heavy modifications, and I'll show you why. This is back to its original shape. You see this? So I can still modify this. But what I'll do is if I'm getting ready to commit something and make it permanent, like this right here, I'm going to ungroup it. And then I'm going to group it into one solid shape, right? So now I cannot unmodify these points. So we are going to do that before we, we make it so. Now, I don't want the sky to be peaceful. I want it to be sort of like a sunset. I'm thinking sort of like a reddish purple. Yeah, you know what though? It, it, you know, here's the thing with that deviant though. Honestly, if you, if it helps you, if if you learn from making a one-on-one -on -one copy, go for it. You're not gonna hurt my feelings. Like, I wouldn't post the stuff there if I didn't want you guys to. You know what I mean? I would I would hope you guys try to add some 
differences to it and stuff. But, like, if it helps you to learn the process to make exactly what I made, by all means, go for it. Because in doing so, if you if you do it right and you apply knowledge to it, you're learning as you duplicate. You know what I mean? Which is kind of why I do what I do. Well, I'm all for it. You know, just so you know, don't don't feel like I'm going to be like, oh, you know. Yep, exactly. Now, I will recommend, like, uh, Ace on there. He did the, the little joke one before you. There was a period there where he was literally doing one-on-one, -on -one, right? And I told him, I said, um, I said, you need to, you know, at some point you need to try your own stuff, you know? And so he is now. He's doing more of it. Bot Ross. I wonder who that is. I wonder who that is. Or who does that belong to? Does anyone know? I have a I have a idea. Seven lets me out sometimes, uh-huh. Uh-huh. I thought that's who it was. What's up, Mr. Bot Ross? How you doing today? We're doing more scene stuff, dude. <laughs> no, but honestly, Deviant, you'll never hurt my feelings if you do, right? Like, honestly. So, feel free. I wouldn't put the stuff there if, if uh, I didn't want people to do that, so. Alright, how do I want to... Thinking about this, give me a second here. You know, what's up? We're just gonna do a color for right now. Yep, there you go, man. Go for it, buddy. This makes for good wallpaper for mobile phones. Yeah, right? I mean, here, I'll say this. So this conversation came up the other day. Somebody wanted, I think it was Gamersass. He wanted this as a background. If you guys ever want something I do with a background or something, let me know. I mean, I can convert it to a background. I don't mind. Um, you know, and if you want it for a phone, I can make it fit a phone. Or if you want it for, you know, just desktop, I can do that. I mean, I don't mind. I'm honored that people would want to use my stuff like that. I make my own phone backgrounds, so... What do you guys think of those colors so far? Pretty dynamic, but I like the way it looks. I love the way the water looks. It's got a super cool feel to it. Yeah. So we're gonna do a boat here. Somewhere in this vicinity. Seven? Somewhere in here, we're gonna do a ship. Sort of being tossed about in the waves, right? And we're gonna do some foam and some spray and Got some ideas here. Um, right now, we're just sort of we're getting the picture down. I'll put some stars up here in the sky, sort of like a dusk scene. And I'll show you how I do stars. And this is legit. This is how I do it. Like some people say, "How do you do stars?" Literally circles. And I'm gonna show you how if you haven't ever seen it. I literally just take one circle and make different sizes of it, and then I just scatter the pattern. Right. Then I'll do this. I'll copy those three, copy and paste it, and just move it around and flip it and stuff. See that? Give it a spin. Copy it over here. Give it another spin. This is how I make star patterns. Awesome. See? There it is. I mean, it... <laughs> yeah, that's true, though. I mean, you know, it's... So anyone here football fan? Did anyone enjoy the game? Did anyone care about the game? Here is. Hey, yeah, that, and that's how a lot of people seem to be. 
I don't watch nearly as much football as I used to, so. Should we try to make like a little pseudo constellation? Might be kind of cool, right? I, I will say this, bot, there's seven. I never, okay, even when I really enjoyed football, and I still do enjoy football, I just don't watch it as often as I did once upon a time, right? I don't get those people, because, why? Now, I've been to, um, I've been to NFL games live, okay? They're fun, but there's a lot of things about them I'd rather just be home in my own couch. I mean, you know, depending on the weather, it can be a drag. you got lines to go to the bathroom. I mean, there's a lot of negatives when it comes to when it comes to being at a pro game of any sport, whether it be baseball or whether it be, you know, whatever. Um, wrestling's more fun. I don't watch anything anymore, man. I don't really watch any sports anymore. <laughs> I used to love wrestling when I was a kid. I haven't watched it in, yeah, it's been a long time. The last time I probably watched wrestling, I was probably like 15, maybe. It's been, it's been a very long time for me. Did you? Very cool, dude. Awesome, man. Hey, that's awesome, man. Now, I wrestled for real. I went to state once for heavyweight when I was in high school. I did, but that was wrestling wrestling. I don't know if you meant real wrestling or, you know, 1997. Yep. Very cool, dude. I never did any, I never did any sort of like the entertainment wrestling. I only did real wrestling. So, stuff like that. Because I played football and wrestled, but I wrestled heavyweight. So... Oh, you mean like WWE and stuff? What what the current iteration of it? Yeah, I would agree. <laughs> Sorry, Deviant. It's not. The stars look good, right? It's got a nice pattern to it. It's got a nice flow. And see, with this is, you don't want the pattern to be consistent. Uh, but let's try to do, like, a really small sort of constellation here. What we'll do is we'll kind of mimic the, like, a Big Dipper or something. Or a Little Dipper. We'll just kind of come in here. And we'll do something similar to this. Yeah, I like that. Just, like, a small sort of section in the sky. Until the Easter Bunny isn't real. Yeah, yeah. Well, Deviant, you're in for a hard day there, buddy. <laughs> Alright, so I don't want this... I want to change the colors of the island. I don't want it to be a black sort of monotone. So let's go like this, and let's experiment with some colors for this. Now, I want the, the island to play off the what's going on in the sky. So, I think for this top color, I think we'll choose that same color. And then for the bottom color, I don't know. Let's just let's mess around with it and see what we can come up with. Um, again, we're going for a little weird here, so bear with me. We've sort of been experimenting with colors and experimenting with different ways to do this. So that's kind of the point of this drawing. See what we can do here. Oh, you know what? 
I don't want to do that to the whole thing though. Let's ungroup that again. Ungroup it. We'll take this and we'll upgrade it. So Affinity, have you found that uh, transparent tool in Affinity, Deviant? Transparent tool is pretty cool. I mean, I know it's just a gradient with one end turned with the opacity down, but it's still pretty cool, like the way that it works. Nope. You haven't? Well, check this out. You can do very quick uh, um, transparencies. Pretty awesome. So let's say you take this image here and you make it orange. Hey, Micah, thank you for the follow. I appreciate that. Hope you're having a great day. If you have any questions for me, let me know. So if you hit, I want to say it's Y. Yes, it's Y. Watch this. If you go to any image and you do this, it drags a transparent gradient over it. So it's an easy, quick way to make transparencies. And then you can you can control the flow of um, you can control the flow of like uh, how gradient it is and everything. And then I want to say you can come back here and you can do stuff with the coloring and stuff. Yeah, so and you can do that with any shape. So you could have done that with you know instead of using the gradient tool, you would just use the transparency tool. <laughs> yeah, it's pretty cool, man. That's a neat feature, because I don't think I've actually seen that in any other software, unless I'm wrong. I could be wrong, but pretty cool. I'm probably wrong. Seven will tell me I'm wrong. Okay, I like that. You see that? Now this sort of the base is dark right so it sort of fits the dark land but then it has the illumination from some of the skylight that's coming through I like the way that looks now we need to do a light for the uh we'll do a light for the lighthouse itself we'll do that in a minute um we're just sort of building up here now it's nighttime so do we want some form of like moon or What are we thinking here? Really digging the sky. In fact, I have an idea. I don't know if this would even work. Bear with me here. What if we take that transparency tool I just showed you? Crescent? Okay. What do you think of that? It almost gives a, like an illumination off the water in a way. It sort of breaks the gradient up a little bit. But in a way that it sort of creates this eerie like cast light right here. You see that? I like that. It makes it look like, so it's, it's, yeah, I like that. We'll roll with it. Now, um, yeah, that's cool. That's cool. All right, so crescent, so easy enough. Make it like this. And then we can, you know, of course, we can uh, control how much of a crescent we actually want, but we'll start with this. Shoot and start? We can do a shoot and start, yeah. We'll just leave it here for now. We may change the location and everything, but we'll just kind of, we'll, we'll play on that for now. I don't know if I would like the crescent though, to be honest with you. Maybe I would rather do it like this. Hold on a minute. No, oh, I don't like that either. I don't know. We'll, we'll leave it there for a minute and see if it grows on me. Now. I want to experiment with some clouds. Bear with me, because I'm thinking outside the box here, okay? Uh, with more like fog, I should say, than clouds. And all I'm doing here is taking the pen tool and we're making some sort of unique shapes. Ah, nope. Too far, too far. You know, for somebody who doesn't really do scenes that much, I'm really enjoying them. They're actually very therapeutic. Okay, we're gonna we're gonna get this right. 
So you get the whole shape of the moon, but you just get the crescent lighting. Yeah, and we could. We could. We could. That's not a bad idea. We'll try it in a minute. So what I want to do here is try to give the effect of, like, maybe fog rolling in. You see that? As long as it makes sense and it's like, oh, okay, yeah, I can tell what that is. Yeah, I like this. I like this. Yeah, this is good because we can do multiple layers of this with the opacity to make it look like the background really foggy. You know what I mean? Hey, Letty, how you doing? Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, we've been doing a lot of weird stuff lately. We, I'll, I'll show you here in a second. We did some, uh, we did some neat sceneries. I'll show you the, sort of the progression of my sceneries. In fact, because I started doing scenes about a week ago <laughs> and sort of built up. So this was the first real scene that we did. Right. And I was like, okay, I like it. I like the contrast. Let's see what we can do with this. So we took this and we went over and we started doing other stuff. Hey, don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. I appreciate any time you're here. Don't ever feel bad about that, honestly. Um, so we did this one and then we sort of dabbled with this one and I never really quite finished this one. I want to get in here and finish this one a bit more, but this one is sort of another sort of perspective scene. And then we did this one yesterday, which is probably my favorite so far, besides the very first one. We went for a very um, science fiction, sort of cyberpunk sort of vibe uh, with like a land speeder, right? And it's still my style, but I'm trying to apply just overall scenes and bigger pictures than just like a character or just like a certain thing, you know? Trying to make actual what would be like a book or, or something like that. And then um, today we're working on this here. So we're gonna have a um, we're gonna have an obviously a, uh, a sea sort of a nautical scene, and we're going to see what we can do with it. And again, I didn't sketch, so we're just sort of uh, we're just sort of winging this out, seeing what we can do with it. Thank you, appreciate that. Yeah, we. We have some fun here. So if there's any new folks here, my name is Jeremiah. I do uh, vector art and pixel art. If you guys have any questions for me, feel free to ask. Uh, we welcome questions here. So, feel free. You guys like the fog? You think it works? I do. I think it sort of creates that. What is this now? Ooh, this point's a little broke. We got it better. So this is called Affinity Designer, Letty. This is a vector-based uh, software, very that similar to like, so right there. There's the link for you. Um, and this is going to be very similar to like Adobe Illustrator, which would be probably the most well-known um, vector software. So you've got several versions of vector software. You're going to have Adobe Illustrator, Affinity Designer. You're going to have Gravit Designer, Inkscape. Uh, some people use Synfig to actually make art. There's a lot of different variations of uh, vector art. Uh, I think Corel Draw? Is it Corel Draw that's a uh, vector? I don't know. But uh, there, there's a bunch of different versions of it. They all are very similar in terms of usage. There are a few variations with how they work. So... Um, you know, but they're all pretty much, the practices are pretty much the same, honestly. Like, I tell people all the time, if, you, if you're if you used to Adobe Illustrator, or you're used to, you know, a specific software, you could very easily pick up Affinity, and within a couple weeks, you could be functional, I would say. What do you think on that, Deviant? Wouldn't you say? You picked it up pretty quickly. Yeah, the fog looks good. I'm happy with that. It sort of, it fits what we did here with the, the smoke for the speeder, right? Same concept. You know, Village, hey, that's awesome, man. 
you know the thing is is like if you're gonna if you're gonna do it just dive in you know and and the thing is is if you do something long enough regardless of what it is music art whatever you're going to learn it you're gonna figure it out you know what i mean hey thanks for the spark letty so it's all a matter of how much you want to commit to it really because i see people sometimes you know they struggle with it and it's like honestly the only because we actually did this last night we went over some of my early early vector art images and they were pretty bad but I look at them critically because I look at where I've grown, right? So it's it's sort of, it's a good thing to sort of look back once in a while and see where you came from. Hey, Glass, am I salty? Nah, no salty. We're just, uh, I felt like making some sort of a, I don't know, man. I had this, like, vision for a, sort of a, a sea scene, sea scene weird um and so i really wanted to experiment with it and see what i could do with it but i wanted to do some really dynamic colors with it again and originally i was going for like maybe a paper cutout sort of look but i don't know if that's gonna work anymore but i still like it nonetheless how you doing today man Good, man. I'm glad to hear it. Yeah, we've been doing a lot of scene studies lately, man. We did, uh, see scene your... <laughs> we've been doing a lot of studies lately. Been doing a lot of scene stu stuff, but I, I sort of want to because I'm trying to figure it all out. Um, and, um, really enjoying it. The whole, the process of it. Uh, because it's, it's sort of a... It feels good doing something I don't normally do, if that makes sense, you know? Resides this a little bit here. Right about there with it. Nice. I like that. I like that fog back there. That looks pretty cool. It works. Okay, so let's start on the boat. Very good, man. Well, dude, keep it up. We were actually just talking about that as you came in. I don't know if you caught the tail end of that. But, you know, we had somebody in here last night and they were, they were asking, like, how do you get better at this? And it's like, honestly, just... Do it. You know, just draw as often as you can. That's how you're going to get better at this. There's no quick method. I don't know, Letty. I don't know. Exactly, Glass. It's like anything in life, right? You want to learn how to play a guitar? You're going to learn by making mistakes. I mean, that, that's, the, that's the nature of it. I'm sure Dragon Claw would say the same thing about Chainmail. You know, you're going to you're gonna make mistakes, you're going to learn. There's nothing wrong with that. Hey, how do you get a good look at you do? What's up, Tiger over there on YouTube, man? Good to see you, buddy. We're just doing some art streams here. All right, I don't know on the boat. Let's um, let's do this. Let's take and do. I'm gonna pull a couple references here. I don't think I want to do a pirate ship per se. I think I want to do more like a maybe a tugboat. Tugboat? A boat with wings? Oh, so you're going more like fantastical approach, Letty. Get that working, brother, man. I'm trying, dude. I'm trying, Tiger. I'm trying. It's a grind, man, but we're getting there. So right now, Tiger, we're restreaming on uh, YouTube, Mixer, and DLive. So we're in three places right now. A steampunk sloop. Ooh. Oh. <laughs> okay. 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 All right, let's do this. We know we want a sloop size ship. All right. Let's start with the, the sizing of the ship. Once we have the sizing of the ship right, then we'll, we'll work on where we want to be with like the details and whatever we want the ship to be. Um, that'll work. Yeah. Yeah, man, we're trying, Tiger. We're trying, man. It's good fun. Like, I really enjoy it. Let me look up some sloops. How would we do a... What color do we want the ship? A 
crystal sloop. <laughs> um, I'm brainstorming. I probably should have thought about this. And here, folks, is where sketching comes in handy. And this is what I do too little of. I'm looking at different ships on Google real quick just to try to get a grasp of the styles of ship. And of course, we're doing a flat sort of perspective, which will look fine because that'll come across very clearly as a ship. But it will be no worries. All right, let's 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 start. We'll do like here we did with the sci-fi scene, where we built the speeder here. We'll just sort of what we're gonna do is just uh, burnt orange ship. We'll just sort of build it out of shapes like we did the speeder here. I don't know if y'all saw this. Did you see this one, Glass? The um, sci-fi sort of cyberpunk one we did last night. Um, I went really heavy with color use on this one. Um, but for the speeder, we just sort of built it out of basic shape. So I think we'll do the same thing here. And we'll, um, yeah, let's get started on it. So let's grab the pen tool. We're going to make all these shapes by hand. We're not going to use any sort of custom shape. So, yeah, it might. So what I usually do, guys, is um, we draw whatever it is we're drawing. We don't worry about the size at first because this is vector art. So I can resize it well and I can change colors on the fly. So don't worry about colors and sizing when we get started. It will all sort of change organically as we progress, okay? Because I think a lot of people, they sort of freak out when they see how big something is, you know, or something like that. <laughs> no, 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 you guys are fine. You guys are fine. I'm just trying to make this work in my head. I don't normally draw boats. So this for me is sort of like, what the heck am I doing? And I'm off the canvas right now. You can tell at this point. All right, so we're going to get the basic size of the slooping. And then we're just going to go with a pink or like a red. All right, now, again, you see this? We can move this. They really are. They really are. But we can do it. We can do it. I have faith. So this is going to be the general shape of the hull. And then what we're going to do is we're going to go in between these two waves here. All right, but it's too big at this point. So we're going to go a little smaller. And we'll have it riding sort of right here in this wave like this, which means we may need to modify the wave just a bit, which is easy enough. We just grab this point and sort of move it up. No, no, we can do it. We can do it, guys. Have faith. We'll get it. I'm not afraid of a challenge. So I'm kind of like in that placement right there because what this does, how about a double a blade looking sloop fast and agile? That's kind of what I'm thinking, Tiger. We're going to sort of make it. Yeah. Yeah. We need to take the stars to the background and then forward one. Okay. So I'm thinking like this because I want to see the lighthouse off in the distance, right? And we're going to do a, uh, um, we're going to do a glare on the lighthouse light. We just haven't done that yet. Um, but for now, aircraft carrier, good lord. Folks are trying to kill, you know, I've drawn one boat in my whole life. One boat. I'm a glutton for punishment, I assume. Because I like to give myself things that are, hey, let's draw a boat and a sea picture. Neither of which I've ever drawn. <laughs> okay, so let's do it like this. We're going to do sort of a small, agile Kind of like Tiger was saying on YouTube there. I think we'll do sort of a small, agile-looking ship. Now, we have to choose the direction of the ship because this is going to affect the details. Are we going to go more like metallic sort of steampunk? Are we going to go more like wood sort of old-school renaissance look? Are we going to go more modern like uh, fiberglass? What are, we, what are we going for here? Old school? So we're looking at like, <clears throat> like a pirate, almost like a pirate's loop. Okay, so if we do a pirate sloop, then we can put a take some of Glass's ideas with that as well. We can tie in some steampunk sort of elements there. Duct tape patch job. <laughs> Alright. Alright, we're just going to make what would be a quarters. And we'll come back and we'll, we'll modify said points here in a bit. 
The whole time I'm doing this, I'm sort of thinking of a sloop from Sea of Thieves, by the way. Because that's really the only real uh, close relative I have to think of here. So we'll go like this. And again, the colors are just for drawing contrast. They could be anything right now. We could be using hot pink, orange, doesn't really matter to me. Yellow. <clears throat> this is just the basis of it. Because when you're creating this style of art, it all starts out sort of flat. And it kind of stays flat in the long run. Okay, so I like that. This will be like a cabin here. And then what we'll do is we'll do like a... I want sort of a bow to crest on this. So let's go like this. And uh, for those new faces here, guys, um, if there is anyone new here, feel free to ask questions. Um, we, I welcome questions here. If you want to know what kind of software I'm using, how I'm doing what I'm doing, any of those questions are fine. Just be sure to ask. We welcome that kind of input here, so. If you have any questions on vector art in general, how to do it, how to get started with it, I can help with that as well. So we're going to go like this, and I want this to sort of have this weird appearance at the front, sort of like this, right? And then we'll have it follow back here like this. Cool. Very cool. Now, we're going to start on the colorization of the ship itself. And I think what we'll do is we'll start with like a sort of a wood tone, right? And then what we'll do is we'll kind of build up from there. So we'll go here. We'll make this darker. Because we're going to use basic color separation to sort of... Alright, cool. So there we go. We're starting to make the ship. Now, um... How do we want to do this? The cabin is going to be sort of, I think, here-ish. And we'll go back to this color. Fantastic. Now, what do we need? We're going to need sails and stuff on the boat, right? Now, a boat this size would have one sail, correct? Anyone out here a boat enthusiast? I'm thinking one sail. So we'll kind of go... Here? Yeah, this will work. Down, in... Right, there we go. So we'll start here like this. We'll do this as a mast. And maybe we'll do a crow's nest. I don't know if it's going to make sense. But we're going to change the color up. Right now we're just using this. <clears throat> oh yeah? Benchy? Benchy. Oh, okay, yeah. I see it. Yep. I can see where you see, yeah. I can see what you mean. Alright. And we're going to do some details on the lower. It is. Alright, how do I want to do windows on this? Let's do rounded, sort of, rounded rectangles. Like we're making Space Cat's head, right, Deviant? We'll do a little window, sort of like this. And we're just going to do a different color for right now. Okay. We'll sort of drop it in here. And see, it can be really hard for people when they first look at the, to, to see where the picture goes. Because I think a lot of people, they struggle because at first it looks so simple, right? But that the point of this is that it, it develops over time and the detail develops over time. It's not an immediate sort of thing. Uh, it is. Yes, it is. Uh, it's, it's another form of a rounded rectangle. Exactly. I can pull it up and show you. Hold on. 
where it's at even complete i think it's under social right here here it is here's everything i used to make the um to make him and the raid screen that i have so you can see the body here <clears throat> if we copy that out you see what it is it's a rounded rectangle with a rounded rectangle inside right and then the legs are just rounded rectangles appended to the same color to the sizing the arms are you guessed it rounded rectangles are just put to the back and what's the tail well same thing rounded rectangle you know what i mean and then the stars i did here for the raid screen and everything they look like they're hanging on strings and then you have Space dog. Yeah. <laughs> we haven't used space dog at all yet, Letty, but we have him created. One of these days, we'll get him in there. Oh, that's one thing. You know, we might do that today at some point. My daughter has demanded that she be involved in my... I'll show you guys this real quick in case you haven't seen this. Hold on a second. She wants to be in my YouTube intro video. So I was like, okay, so watch this. This is my new YouTube intro. It's me sort of being created out of shapes, right? And then my name, and then it sort of fades out, right? Well, my daughter, she's like, uh, I want to be in that, Daddy. So, I think what I'm going to do is I think we'll make it, and we'll have her sort of pop out behind me, in a way. Like, maybe in here. Maybe have her pop out behind me and sort of wave or something. I don't know. We're going to... We'll figure it out. We'll figure it out. We'll look into it. Oh, we'll figure it out. Well, see, my daughter does all my voices on here, Letty. That's why. She likes being a part of the stream. And uh, if you've watched any of my new YouTube videos, she's actually in the... Um, she voiced some of it now. So, uh, my I changed up some of the voices on the YouTube videos because she's in it now. Just like she is part of the stream. And um, so, yeah. Good stuff. She enjoys it. She gets to tell her friends that she's on the internet makes her happy okay cool I like the way that looks we'll kind of go there with it go a little lower in the water I like that a little bit lower okay cool so we'll go kind of here with it So, in order to make this look right, I'm going to need to do this. If I really want this detail to hold true, we're going to need to almost make this look like scale mail. It's the only connection I can sort of give it to. So it would be sort of this. And then here. Right? I think this is what I'm looking for. Cut it, paste in front. Now... Bring it back right there. So, now, what I want to do here is this is how I'm going to give the side of the ship detail, like the wood and stuff. Otherwise, it's going to not look like it has any sort of pattern to it. So we'll take this one a little darker. Stick with me. You'll see what I mean. To make it look like the individual boards. Okay, and we'll copy it down again, and we will go back to that original color, and we'll go back one. And you see, all we're going to do is sort of step this down, and keep stepping it down. And this is going to, hopefully, give the ship the, the effect that we're going for here, which is going to be this sort of a scattered wood. You see that? Oh, this is what I'm envisioning. Kind of go there. Nice. And here. Yep. Okay, perfect. And then we'll just kind of keep doing that. And then we'll do some small sections. And I'll show you what I mean by that here in a minute. Okay, so you don't really see that one anymore. Yep. 
Okay, get rid of you. Sorry, I'm sort of focusing. Because we're going to have to come in and we're going to have to tie all this together into a bigger image here in a bit. Or, uh, I want to change the colorization of some of this here in a few. Okay, so that gives the side of the ship some of those details, right? So it doesn't look so flat, per se. Um, now, we're going to do some coloring and stuff there. We'll, we'll, we'll make it look right. We'll do some gradients and whatnot. Um, in fact, let's start that now. So we'll kind of go like uh, this. We'll revert that gradient so it's dark to light kind of thing. And then we'll take for this will be this. And then it will go lighter into I think in here? Maybe not? I don't know. Give me a minute. I'm working on it. Alright, so go here. Go here. Flip it. We want this to be this color. Yeah. The top, we want it to be that color, but darker. There we go. Now, the hard part about this is going to be getting the gradient in the right place. So that it makes sense for all of the other shapes. Yeah, this is gonna be tough, but we can do it. I have faith. Let's go ahead and do this one now. So we'll go in here, we'll grab this color, we'll give it a gradient of right here, and let's take this color and we'll go with this, and this color we'll go with that, but we'll go darker. Okay, good. Good, good, good. Hey, Fenna, how you doing? Ahoy. <laughs> hey there. Thanks for coming by. Yeah, we're doing some scene stuff. Uh, we're playing around with this boat right now. We're not 100% done with it. We're just having fun. Messing around with shapes and stuff. And we want to sort of create this almost... Magical looking, I guess it's the right word, sort of scene with this boat out here in the lighthouse. How you doing, Fenna? All right, so let's do something with this mast. This is Affinity Designer. This is a vector-based software, very similar to what would be um, Illustrator, Adobe Illustrator. And we've been doing a lot of uh, scene stuff like this. We've been doing a lot of different scenes like this science fiction thing. And we did this sort of a park scene and uh, this, I don't know what you would call it. It's like a farm scene, I guess. We've been doing a lot of different variations of scenes and stuff. Yep, this is Affinity. Yep. You know, you don't try it. Yeah, it's a um, great piece of software. I'd highly recommend it, right? But obviously I use it all the time, so... For me, it's an easy recommendation. But. Alright, so we're going to, yeah, so far it's turning out the way I want. I like it. Let's go here. We'll take this color, and then for this color, we'll just go darker. See that? Looks like easy. I mean, it's... Well, here's the thing. 
Um, any software you use, whether it be you know Photoshop or or Illustrator, or Inkscape, or Affinity, or whatever it is, really, what's going to be the deciding point of ease is how much you use it and how frequently you use it. Um, and for me, I draw pretty much daily with Affinity, and so it allows me to sort of be very fluent with the um, with the software and how it functions and everything. Um, so. I think it would be easy would be a term if you're if you're familiar with design softwares and especially vector then yes it could absolutely be an easy software I find it easy but then again I use it all the time so again I got some sort of bias toward it <laughs> you try it yeah absolutely go for it Well, see, that's just it, right? Like, it, it's all... It depends on what you're using, you know? Like, for me, I'm, I can do this software very easily because I use it all the time. So it becomes just sort of a natural habit for me. Kind of like walking. I can just sit down and create something. And because I work in Vector so much, for me, it's like... It's, it's as simple as, you know, oh, let's make a boat. How would I make a boat? And I just start making a boat, you know? What's the export type? So you can export to, hang on one second, I'll show you. So we can export to, you got PNG, JPEG, GIF, TIFF, PSD, PDF, SVG, WMF, EPS, EXR, and HDR. Um, and then of course you have a whole export persona where you can actually come in here and you can export certain scenes and certain things out um, there's a lot of, there's a lot of different export functionalities. So would this just be like a flat little roof thing? I'm thinking yes. So what we'll do is we'll copy this style, we'll paste it in here. And then we'll, we're going to do some stuff with this. The windows are not going to stay purple. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yep. It's a very progressive software, and they're actually still developing it. Fana. Like, they're, they're in constant development, and they've got a huge beta coming out. Well, it's in a beta right now. Uh, they've got some... I'll show you guys something really cool. Let me show you something. So here's the beta version of the software. I'll show you guys something. <clears throat> They've got some neat, neat features in here. I use a mouse and keyboard for everything I draw. I own a tablet, but I hardly ever use it. So check this out. They've got some new features coming in beta. Those are going to be in the final version very soon, and I'm excited about these. So for anyone that uses a pen tool, you know if you come in here and you make a shape like this, right? And you give it a fill with no stroke. Okay, so let's say... It, let's say you want to add to this. Traditionally, you would take the pen tool and you would just sort of add in, right? And then you would give it the same color and then you select them both and then you group them, right? That's the way you would do this, okay? Well, let's say we wanted to add another shape. We'd sort of do this. Same thing. Give it a fill. Select them both and group them. Well, they're adding a new feature, so check this out. You can come in. Let's say we have this shape right here whatever this shape is, I don't really care, and we give it this red fill. If we come up here and we turn on add to curves mode, check this out. With the curve selected, if I draw, it automatically adds to the shape. I don't have to combine anything. I don't have to do anything. Uh, I can literally just add shapes to it. Boom. You see? So for anyone that's worked with Vector, and they don't understand that, that's pretty freaking cool. Because that takes out the need to have to combine shapes and stuff. And it's one shape over here. This is not this is not multiple shapes. It's not a pseudo shape. It is a solid shape. The other cool feature they're adding is right here. So most people, they use the pen tool like this. They use it to create pen, pencil lines, right? 
That's not how I use the pencil tool. I give it no stroke, I give it a fill, and I create really organic shape. But let's say I wanted to make smoke. I would do something like this. Okay? And then I would give it a color in a, in a something like this, right? That's how I use the pencil tool. But watch this. Here's what's cool what they're doing with the pencil tool. Let's say you draw this and it ends, all right? So traditionally, you would have to just sort of draw again and try to match up to it kind of thing, right? Well, they're putting in a new feature now to where if you hit that last spot and you draw, look at that, it continues to shape. Now that may not seem like much, but that's pretty cool. Especially for people who use the pencil tool in this way. Because not only will that work with the stroke, that'll work with the fill as well. So let's say we do that with the stroke and then we want to keep going. Look at this. Now we're drawing one shape. So we don't have shapes and shapes and shapes and shapes and we're not combining little shapes. So if we look at this, this is one solid shape. But we picked up the mouth in between. So it's, it's a basically it's a new way to make combination shapes without having to go up and combine shapes. So effectively, you can look at it like it's going to increase your productivity with how quickly you can work. Now, this is in the beta version of the software. It's not in full release yet, but it's coming very soon. They're also adding some new tools that are going to allow you to do um, isometric art very easily. Um, for anyone that doesn't know what isometric art looks like, we'll open a couple real quick. So, was mine in here I did it? Uh, actually, we just did that one. Let's open that up. Hey, Bake Cupcake. How you doing? Let's go... Where is the... Was it in this year? I swear, my brain is on a swivel. Right there it is. Okay. So, this is what isometric looks like, guys. So they're adding in new tools that are going to allow you to do isometric art as well. Now, I made this in Affinity, okay? And it is totally possible at this point in Affinity to do that. Um, however, they're adding in new tools to allow you to really do some awesome isometric stuff. Um, and I actually did a YouTube video where I made this and showed you guys like the speed art version of this. If you guys are interested, I do make YouTube videos and I put all my stuff on YouTube, which allows me to sort of showcase a quick start to finish of these drawings so you can see exactly how I made them. Um, hey, I mean, how you how are you doing on YouTube? Thank you. Good to see you, babe. Yeah, so there's some there's some cool features coming into beta. Um, there's some very few, very, very cool features. I'm excited. I'm excited. I hope that they release the beta to full production soon because I want to use some of those new features, but I don't want to use those new features on my... Um, on my work because it's not good to use beta versions of software on your current work so hoping they release that sooner than later but you know You like to draw shadowless. So the way that I, my, my drawing style is constantly evolving, Fena. And the way that I do it is like, there's some things I do without shadows, some things I do with shadows. It sort of depends on the picture. Um, I don't really have a particular list that I follow. I sort of just do whatever comes to mind, if that makes sense. Sometimes I feel like shading things, sometimes I don't. You know, it really all depends. Sorry, my nose is itching like crazy today. So we're going to do an anchor hanging off the side here. We're going to tie these sails in. I want to change the lighting on the sail because I want the ship to adapt more of the colors of the sky. And we're going to do that here in a bit. And see, I don't do a lot of outline stuff, so I'll show you guys real quick an example of something. I don't do a lot of heavy outlines. I usually create my um, my perspectives through 
uh, color stepping, and I'll show you what I mean by that. Let's say I wanted to take this and make it darker. And what I would do is come up here into my light, and I would go darker. 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 So I create my depth through shading, okay? On the flip side, if I want to go lighter, then I just add a little lightness to it. You see that? So because I don't do a lot of outlines and stuff, I will generally create depth through colors like this. And what this does is almost like a painter's palette. It really creates harmonious colors because all of the colors deviate from that very first color. They're all in that same palette because they're all created from that. So in doing so, the color palette works really, really well. You know? And it works out. <clears throat> hey, Knuckle, how you doing, buddy? Captain Awesome, thank you for that host. Gonna lurk at work. Hope you have a good stream. Thank you, Captain. No problem. Oh, man. I'm sorry to hear that, Knuckle. Good to see you, buddy. Letty, thank you for the host. Hey, Cupcake, thank you for the host. Thank you, guys. Appreciate it. Okay, yeah. All right, thanks, guys. I'm gonna be brought... Okay, all right, I'll take a look at it. What time? About two, three hours? I don't want to do a cabin. I don't want to do a cabin on the ship at all. I hate it. No cabin. The ship is going to be a a, 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 no, a cabinless ship. I don't like it. I don't like it. I think we'll do some boxes and we'll do some stuff like that. I don't like it. Don't like it. Hate it. Hate it. Executive decision. <laughs> I mean, sometimes you look at something and you're just not feeling it, right? Get rid of it. Instead of sitting there throwing more time at it, be done with it. All right. So let's do this. Now, I want the sail to take on more of the properties of the sky, but in a very unique sort of way. I don't want it to be as dark. All right, Fenna. I'll stop by and take a look. Now, I want to create sort of a tone on the ship as well. And for those that don't know, this is this is a learning stream for me, okay? I don't normally do um I don't normally do scenes and stuff. I these are these are a few of the scenes that I've done, period. Um and I'm sort of I'm still learning and trying to get a grasp on it. And this is sort of my way of doing it. So I'm sort of creating my own techniques and my own sort of style in doing so. So yeah, it's, it's sort of a learning process. All right, Fenna. See you later. Just in case anyone's wondering. I want to do with this. So I like that on the sale. I want the wood to be more, less wood, if that makes sense. Less wood and more. Bear with me a minute here. I'm toying with the idea of metal, but I don't know if I truly like it.
And that looks too much like the seawater. Okay. Try maybe this? What time is it even? Oh wow, it's past my lunchtime. We might take a break here in a little bit and get some lunch. We'll see. We're not really hungry yet, but we'll we'll look into it. I don't know what I want to do with that. <clears throat> Alright, we'll kind of stick with that. Let's take and group the entire, not the moon, not the moon, entire ship. Get rid of the moon. All right, there's the ship. Group this. Now this will allow us to sort of resize this as needed to get it where we want it. Now, these waves here need to be fixed. Point, there we go. This one, what in the world happened here? There we go. More of a point there and down. Okay. Cool. <clears throat> Thank you guys for stopping in today. I appreciate it. If there's anyone new here and you have any questions for me, feel free to ask. I want to do some like sea foam or like bubbles in this. In this. I think. So if I were to do this, it would be more angled like this, down. Yeah, I like that better already. Yeah. Alright, so that's better. Got a better look to it. How long have we been live? Two hours. Okay. We'll go there with it. Something like this. Now, what we'll do... I'm almost feeling like I might need to take a break from this. You know what I mean? Sort of let my brain reset on it. I don't know. Copy this, paste this, or like, yeah, all right, yeah, the boat looks out of place, I'm not sure what I'm not liking about it, I don't know if it's the colors, I don't know if it's the style, but the boat looks out of place. Yeah. Well, you know what I think it is? The rest of the colors work really well in terms of flow and harmony. The boat doesn't. And what I mean by that is, I almost feel like we need to take the boat and make it one uniform color and just sort of have it in a distance. No, 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 you're good, you're good, you're good. I think I get what you're trying to say. Here, here, bear with me a minute, let's do this. Let's ungroup this entire thing and let's group it. I know this is seem, it's gonna seem weird for a minute. We're gonna move this up out of the scene. We're going to take these two and group them together, just for now. Now watch this. If we make this much smaller and we copy this gradient, and paste this gradient, right? See, that already looks sort of better to me, right? That's sort of what I was envisioning, was having... I don't, I don't think I want the boat to be as detailed as we were going. I think I want it to be more like an object in the scene. You 
see what I'm saying? Like, I want it to be part of the scene, but I don't want it to be the focal point of the scene. I think that's what I was trying to say without understanding how I was trying to say it. Now, we can change the grading, the gradient or the shading of it without, without real problems. I mean, that's easy enough. So I got an idea there. Um, I'm thinking about doing some sea foam or sea spray or like bubbles or something. Mermaids, maybe. Yeah. And this again, folks, is where sketching can sometimes be a lovely, lovely thing. <laughs> Let's flip this. And this is where we can play with these colors a bit. Check this out. Now watch this. We can do some stuff like this. Because I like the overall, I like the look of the ship, right? I think it has a neat look to it. How about we do this? Let's shift gears for a second. Let's go do the light on the lighthouse. Because I have an idea. If we do the light on the lighthouse, I think we're going to be able to um, use that same light to make lights on the boats, maybe. You'll see what I mean. You'll see what I mean. Hold on. But let's go with... An outer glow on this. And we'll grab this color. We'll put an outer glow, which is almost going to make it look like a sun inside of there. But that would make sense. Right? And then what we'll do is... I don't know how much out beyond this I want to go. I guess we could take and paste this. And go toward the back and we could sort of maybe use a uh, transparency to sort of make this glow look like it's coming outside of it so we'll try 50 yep and then we'll copy and paste it again same thing we'll go like 30 I mean we have several ways we could do this to be honest with you this glow here I want to try this first and then back out and see what we think so let's go 40 30, we'll copy and paste it again, we'll go 20, okay, so I'm, and then this would sort of be in the center as sort of like the nucleus for it, right? Now, in order to make this look right, the light would come out past the lighthouse, right? It wouldn't just be behind the lighthouse. I think it would also be in front of it. So what we would do is sort of get the lighting here, right? And percent, which is going to be sort of like this. Okay, so now what we're going to do is we're going to take this one and I think we're gonna give it a little bit of a Gaussian blur as well I think we'll go one see what that looks like yeah I like it so let's take you 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 and and hold on this go back one all right group it now we're gonna experiment here we're gonna put it on front of the lighthouse and see what we think I don't like that. Okay, right away I don't like it. Okay, so I think we'll go like this. I'm liking the way that looks. Now, I want to use that same effect to maybe create some lanterns on the ship. And I'll show you how we're going to do this. Let's draw like what would be lanterns hanging off of this boat here. So we'll take, give it a color. Let's see if we can do this. Perfect. See that? Then we can just drag these points out. Now, we're going to create a lantern. So it'll be sort of like this. 
And see, sometimes just changing the shift or the focus of what you're working on can make all the difference. Sometimes if you're stuck in a certain area, you just you just shift and you work on something else for a while. And it really, really can make a difference. Okay, I like this. I like where this is going. Okay, so then we're going to take you, you, we're going to copy. We're going to paste and we're going to drag. Now watch this. We're going to cheat. Cheating is okay. <laughs> Get rid of here. All right, so we're going to go like this. We're going to throw this in the center of this lantern, like this. Now, we're going to take this same image that we did for this, and we're going to take it to the back and then bring it forward. Now, what we may do is obviously tone this down a bit, because this is not a lighthouse. This is just a lantern. But I think what I would do is get rid of the center effect, keep all these, and sort of size them down. See that? So what this does is it sort of gives the perspective of light in the image, which I like. Um, and then here, I think I would actually drag these up so we can actually size this a bit and bring this more like this. Oops. And bring this more like this. Okay. Perfect. So then I would say there would be more... Um, There'd be more lanterns, right? I would think so. Yeah. I think we'll do another lantern. We'll do one hanging off the top deck. So, or we'll have one sort of hanging up here. I think. Have it here. There we go. We'll take that same color. Perfect. And now we're just going to do the same thing. We're just going to grab this. We're going to draw it out like so. We're going to hang it here. And then we'll make our own sort of internal shape like such. There we go. Resize it. Place it. Take all of this, group it, and then take it into this and group it. See, this way this sort of becomes part of the, the image like it should. All right, now, uh, take all this and move it over. There we go. But now, we sort of have this ship, right? And we're going to group it and put it right here in between this wave. So it looks like... We have the light coming from the ship. We have the light coming from the lighthouse, which I like both. And then what we'll do is I want to play with like lights in the sky. Almost like, think almost like the Northern Light, like a World Borealis or something. You want to sort of play around with that idea. We need to move this. What is this? What shape am I clicking on? That's it. Let's lock it. Okay. Which is going to allow me to sort of move this up. Move the boat over to right about there. Good. Don't like that star there. It's too big. Okay, good. I'm liking that. It's working for me. Working. Yeah, I like this. I like it better than what we were doing. What we were doing just wasn't working for me. And I think it's because the picture wasn't built for that. I think we were sort of, we were creating this almost magical, mystical looking feeling. And then we were trying to force in this realistic looking ship. And I think that's where the problem was. I don't think it worked. I don't think it worked well. I mean, that's okay to admit it. I mean, you know, you got to be honest with stuff when it doesn't work. Okay. Now, what about the impression of an anchor somewhere? All 
Alright, cool. I like the lanterns. I like them a lot, actually. Would there be a lantern on the front of the boat? Or would that be too many? I don't know. <clears throat> like hanging here from this? What do you think? Hey, awesome person. Yes, I actually have. If you look on my YouTube channel, I've actually got some tutorials on there. Uh, awesome. And I'm actually in the process of making a lot more as we go. So, um, if you have any specific requests, just leave them in, like, the comments of one of my other videos, and I'll be glad to make stuff for you. I've made, like, a boy, a girl. We've made a dog. We've made, like, a cat and a couple other things. But be sure to check those out. Uh, and I use free software, paid software. I have a bunch of different software that we use. So let me know if you have any specific questions according to that. Maybe not, right? I like it though, right? Because it sort of fits in this vein. I don't know what it is about this style, but I'm liking it. Like, I'm liking this so much better than the boat. I don't know why. I, I, I'm enjoying the simplicity of this detail. I can see where having the more detailed boat would have been cool, but at the same time, I really appreciate the the way this looks, because it has such a clean, refined image to it. Alright, now we're going to play with the water, Letty. We're going to see what we can do to make the water look a little more impactful. I think it's going to be the right word here. Well, let's start with white, and we're going to go with like 20%, I think. We're in full-on experimentation mode here, folks, so... Hold on. <laughs> this may or may not be a good thing. We could do... We could do some, like, mermaids around the boat or something. Like, silhouettes of, like, mermaids. Sort of hanging around the ship. That may be kind of cool. Like, maybe just slowly cresting the water a little bit. Like, some smaller mermaid shapes. We might try that. Ooh, yeah. You know, we did a... Hang on, check this out. You'll like this one, then. If you like this style, you'll love this one I did. I'm actually going to turn this into a YouTube video on how to do it. But it's going to be quite an involved process so I don't I'm not quite sure how I'm gonna break this one down yet where in the world is it mm -hmm. yeah I know exactly what you're talking about hold on hang on this is what happens when you draw too much you end up with too much stuff We'll open the regular picture. Hold on. I know where it is in the slideshow. It's I'll have to find it. I That's one thing I've got to learn to do. <laughs> I need better freaking organization of my files. And, and that's something that I'm slowly learning. Okay, so right here. Check this out. So here's what I did. I actually did this on stream, Letty. And this is more of like a traditional flat design. But we did this little fish right here. See this? And we did the whole seabed. And we did these jellyfish. And, you know, we had a good time with this one. So we can, um, yeah, 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 yeah. We'll, um, yeah, yeah. Now this was more like a traditional flat design, um, which is still super good fun, but this is going for a little more of like a, I don't want to say realistic, but got a little different feel to it, I think. I really wanted that cutout sort of papery appearance, and I think we're getting it. All right, so we're going to go there. So what I'm doing with YouTube, guys, is just so you all know, these sort of drawings that take me, you know, hours to complete and things like that, because we don't, you know, we're sort of feeling out the image and everything. I'm turning those into sort of speed drawings on YouTube. So what I'm essentially doing is redrawing it on YouTube, and we're doing it in a speed art sort of sense, so you can see a 10 to 15 minute video on start to finish, how exactly this was made. And 
I like doing it like that because it sort of helps people see the process of, of a whole drawing rather than, you know, the process of what it actually takes, which is an hour or more. And sometimes my drawings are really, really quick. But, you know, nine times out of ten, the drawings take a while. I mean, it's a very sort of committed process. But anyway, that that's what the YouTube drawings are going to be in case anyone's interested. Um, and we're close. I think we're close to breaking 200 followers on uh, YouTube. So we're, we're definitely growing over there. And I think one thing that's helping is as I'm doing my, I'm restreaming my live streams over there as well. So it, it's helping sort of not only get the the subs for the video stuff, but actually getting subs for just the, the content itself, you know, for the live stream. So working. We're going to group these, cut them, and we're going to paste them inside the wave. Because I want these shapes to be part of their respective wave. So if we move the wave, the shape will move with it. See this? So now if we move this wave, see how those move with the wave? This would be cool to animate. Look at this. You could take it into like an animation software and you could move it all down. This would animate really well. Like super, super well. Here, 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 here. Group it, cut it, and paste it. Awesome. So I like it. Sort of adds a little bit of detail to the water, but not in a bad way. Now, I want to do something else. I don't want it on the back waves, I don't think. I think I want it on the first two waves. I want to experiment with, is this enough, or should it be a little, I feel like it should be a little darker on the yeah, I like that. Now, here's the next portion. Would there be highlights of the sky on the waves, on the tops of the waves? If so, how or what? So let's experiment with that. Let's take this wave here. We're going to go to the stroke and we're going to make it can you add a gradient to a stroke? You can. But, I could break the stroke, make it a shape, and give a gradient to the shape. I don't know. I don't know if I want to do that. Play with this. We're going to combine these two. This is the 20. This is the 30. Like this. Yeah, I like that. Sort of that fog effect. And what we'll do is we'll slightly decrease in size. Nice. All right, cool. Thank you for the ice cream. I like it. I like it. It's coming along. Thank you for the ice cream. Hey, Meg. Hey, Ordinal. How you doing? Affinity is the best. Good to see y'all. Sorry, I was in focus mode there. I love Affinity Ward. Like, I, it is my main, main software. It is the one thing I use more than pretty much anything else. Thanks for the sparks, Laddie. So, I'm sort of going off of this one, Meg. Look at this, bud. We did this one yesterday. Um, it was sort of a, sort of a hyper-realistic, almost cyberpunk sort of, um, vibe, coloring-wise. And, um... I really like what I did with it, with the gradients and stuff, because I, I took your advice, and I'm really trying to, like, look into gradients more and how to utilize them to make some really cool sort of looking steps between colors, right? So we've sort of been doing that here as well, you know, trying to sort of play with the, how can we make this thing look mystical, magical, you know what I mean? Like, very, very fancy, if you will. 
And so this is sort of like the fourth scene piece we've done. This was, for those that don't know, this was the first scene piece, which I really enjoyed. Um, had a really good time with it. And then we did the second study piece, which we haven't quite finished yet. We're working on it. Hey, thank you for the host over there, buddy. Yeah, right, Meg. Yeah, thank you for the follow word. I appreciate that. Um, and then we did this one yesterday, which I was really, really proud of. And I was going for sort of a Star Wars vibe. Um, for like a Dune slash Star Wars vibe. Uh, kind of having the speeder racing across the land. So we did this dust cloud kicked up behind the speeder here. With the trail sort of signifying, you know, speed. And then we did gradients all the way through to sort of make this look very colorful. And I'm not sure if y'all can tell, but there's a slight bit of noise on the sun. Very slight bit. Just trying to give it some separation. And today we're playing with this guy. Thanks, man. I appreciate it. I'm trying, dude. I, you know, it's one of those things as a, as a, as a whole, I don't normally do scenes and stuff. So I'm really trying to like get outside that comfort zone, but I also want to do it in a way that we do really cool colors, you know? Thanks, Aze. I appreciate it, buddy. Gotta go. All right, man. Well, thanks for that hose, bud. I want to use, I want to experiment. You know what I mean? I want to do some really cool palettes that sort of create these really interesting looks. Like, I don't want to just do your stereo. Because look at this. Check this out. This is what the boat looked like at first. And I tell you, I screwed up big time. Because I built the entire scene, and then I was trying to do this hyper-realistic looking boat. And then I realized, no, the boat needs to be a part of the scene. It doesn't need to be the focus of the scene, right? Because with the rest of the scene looking like this, this just stuck out like a sore thumb. So once I copied it into one shape, gave it a gradient fill, and then started doing like the lights on the ship and everything, to me, it just meshed with the, the scene better. Um, and it sort of has this continuity to it, right? Where it sort of flows in. Um, so we're messing with some fog sort of rolling in around here, little fog behind the boat. And I'm kind of playing with the, I want the wave to almost have the appearance of like a paper cutout or like a book. So yeah, I... The, you know, and this is where the learning process comes in, right? You, you're, you're, caught, you're always learning, you know, and that, and there's nothing wrong with that. It's, it's a process of trying to figure out what works, and that's what I'm doing here. Because when this year started, I realized that I had always shied away from making scenes and whole pieces, and I decided that was enough, and I really needed to dig deep and, and get better at it. So that's what we're doing. All right, I want some stuff in the sky. And I'm not sold on this moon yet. I'm not sold on this moon. Let's do like, let's try some like, sort of like sky streaks. I don't really know a nice way to say it. Um, let me see if I can pull a reference image of something that I might be talking about here. What am I even trying to say? I want like, I think almost like plane trails. Thank you, Ward. I appreciate that. And thank you so much for that follow. I really do appreciate it. Love the stars. Thanks, Dragon. Appreciate it, man. We're trying. We're trying. It's going to be a cool piece. I might turn this into a background. I may turn it into an HD 1080p background and then do like a... Uh, do a uh, stretch it, you know, or uh, add into it to make it like a full-on background because I think this could be really cool. Thank you for the host, Meg. I appreciate that, buddy. Thank you. I'm brainstorming here on what to... I want to do something in the sky. I just don't know what. I don't really want clouds, though. I think I want it to appear almost cloudless. But I'm trying to think of the word for, like, uh, making... Like, almost you would see a trail behind a plane. What would you call that? We could do a shooting star, Letty. Yeah, we'll do a shooting star. What would the... Like, almost like mist or fog? What am I trying to think of here? Falling star? Yeah, that's what that's what they said over a mixer. Dang, let's try that. Alright, if we want to do a shooting star, we're going to steal the center of the lantern, or the lighthouse. We're going to use that as sort of our basis. Chemtrail. Yeah, in a way, right? Or, like, that's kind of what I'm going for. That whole idea, or like, you know, something there. Alright, so if I want to do a shooting star... Now, I don't want this to be gaudy, all right? So, I want it to be tasteful. So, I'm trying to think of the way that I want to handle that. So, what I'll do, 
I want it to be uh, almost like a... Yep, I know what I want. I know what I want. We're going to have it going right here into this general perspective. Don't mind the stroke. The stroke is just there because I was using it. So if you guys have any questions for me, uh, who I am, what I do, what softwares I use, feel free to ask. We welcome questions here. And I like trying to help people learn. So if I can point you in the right direction, sure, let me know. I think I want to go here, which means we're going to shift these stars down a bit. We'll go there with it, sort of like this. Yeah. This is not going to be a heavy outline, by the way. We're just sort of using this as a general shape to the picture. So this is gonna be the center. So it'll kinda of go here. All right, cool. Yep, starting to come. Right now it looks like an egg, which is fine. Bring in these points a bit. So you use affinity as well, Ord, I pretend? Alright, now, this is where we start with transparency. We're going to go down to like 40%, okay? And then we're also going to come in with a gradient. And we're going to go like this. And it'll go dark to light. So we'll go here, go on, here, and we'll... You know what, actually? No, we're not going to do a gradient. Watch this. We're going to do the other tool. The transparency tool. I was actually just showing this earlier to uh, Deviant. Yeah, kind of, kind of, yeah, Meg. You're having fun, you know? You know, the beauty of making art like this is when you don't have any limitations, you know what I mean? Like, this isn't a commission, this isn't, you know, it's just... For fun, knowledge, and, and having a good time. And that's what I love about this. Is being able to use this sort of time to just have a good time. Instead of worrying so much about, oh, is this right or is that right? You know? Because I find a lot of times when you do, like, commission pieces or you do pieces that are sort of focused on something, they can be really um, nerve-wracking because you're so focused on getting it right that you're not having so much fun. You know? And fun is really what art should be. <laughs> so, go here. Okay. So I like this. Okay, I like the look so far. I want this to be a little less. So, let's go more like in the 60% realm, 50% realm. Yep, I like that. That's working. Now, I want it slightly smaller, so we're going to group this. We're going to go slightly smaller. Now watch this. We're going to take this one. We're going to give it a slight Gaussian blur of about, let's try one. See what this looks like. Oh yeah, I like that. We're going to do the same thing here. We're going to take this. Slightly smaller with it. I want smaller on the whole image. So we'll kind of go there now. I want a few more of... We're going to need to get them chemtrails in there for Ord. Alright, I want to look at that for a bit and see how it feels when I rest on it. I'm going to let it sit there. Because, of course, we can move it anywhere in the picture. So we can... You know, we may do it more like here. We may do it off the edge. You know, whatever we want to do. Uh, make it smaller may make more sense and sort of do it like here. You know, I mean, there's, there's so many different things we could do with it. Uh, but we'll just kind of leave it there for now. All right. Um, let's do... What do we want to do? I want those uh, those spots in the skies. Let me look at some... Uh... Now, we could also make that shooting star less noticeable. It could just be a shape, right? So you could just take a tear like this. 
I want to give you all another example. You could just do this. I've seen people use this shape and then just literally give it like, you know, a little bit of a, um, copying it back, like maybe like this. And can sort of like this back here. I mean, there, there's multiple ways to do this. If we want to keep it flat, we can just do it sort of in this this regard right here. Which might actually look better than what I made, I think. So we'll move this up here. Hey, Rory. Thanks for that hose, buddy. How you doing, man? I appreciate that. We're doing some scene studies, man. Scene stuff. What if we did an outer glow on this? I understand. Well, I appreciate that. I certainly, certainly do. We're doing some scene stuff where we're sort of, uh, I want to say almost like learning streams where I'm kind of teaching myself how to do scenes and things like that. Thank you for the you ice know? cream. It's going really well, man. It's going really well. Just kind of having a chill, relaxed, cream. just a relaxed sort of uh, vibe, right? Thanks for the ice cream. Thanks for the lemon, dude. Thank I appreciate that. Ice cream. Thank you. Thank you. We did this thank one uh, yesterday. Right here, Rory? And this was sort of a sci-fi, sort of a sci-fi cyberpunk, right? And um, Thank you for the lemon. I wanted to sort of take this into sort of a scene, like a, a sea Thank sort of environment. Cream. And so that's what I'm trying to do here. Thank you for the lemon. Thank you, man. Appreciate all that support over here. Thank you for the ice cream. Thank you for the lemon. Okay. Yeah, I am so hyped for the Cyberpunk game. Like, I'm gonna, I wanna do some really, I wanna do a, I wanna take this color palette and I wanna make a real Cyberpunk scene. Like a true Cyberpunk scene. Like the buildings with the neon signs and, and, uh, like, like flying cars going by and, and stuff like that. I want to do a full-on cyberpunk scene. Um, and I'm going to use that color palette right there. Um, but I just... I'm, I'm brainstorming on what I want that to look like up here. So that I know what it is I want to make, right? Because right now it's an idea. But I don't have a vision. Because the way that I sort of work... Just so you guys know is... Um, I, I sort of... Because I don't sketch a lot and stuff. I get like a vision or an idea. And then in that idea turns into um that idea turns into like an image and then once i have an image it goes i did not see it was there a, one in the game or something i didn't watch the game my kid was sick <laughs> i'll have to look it up i'm sure it's on youtube by now i'll go look i'll look it up when i get done but i'm super super stoked about that game what about what about more land masses way in the back? Too much? Or should we just have that solo land mass with the lighthouse? The last night trailer. Okay. I'm going to have to go check that out. The last night trailer. I'll go check it out. Yeah, I'm really looking forward to... Uh... I'm really looking forward to Cyberpunk, though. I think for me, the thing that I'm looking forward to most out of Cyberpunk, to be honest with you, is not just the game itself, but the developer. Because they're one of the last developers that I have real faith in. You know what I mean? That they can actually put out a decent, clean, fun product. You know what I mean? Without all the, without all the crap that we deal with on a regular basis with shoddy releases and... You know what I mean? That's what I think has me excited about Cyberpunk. It's the developer. Because I have faith in what they do. What do you think of the double shooting stars? I kind of like that. The 
Because this does look sort of whimsical and magical. So it's not going to be sort of maybe a different reality or realm or whatever. Okay, cool. So let's do that moon. I'm not sure on the moon. And I'm also not sure here what I want to do with the sky. Let's do some random sort of shapes. That not really clouds, though. Like another world flashback. Okay, I'm gonna check that out. There we go. Keep this one really small, really tight. Oh, nice. Like this. I like it. Now, I don't like those shapes, though. I don't know if I want them to be sort of swirly shapes. I'm not sure what I'm going for here. And what about the moon? I don't know if I really like the shape of the crescent moon. What if we did a double moon sort of shape? Let me play with this. Maybe we'll give the perception that this is sort of a distant, um, different world. Sort of like that sci-fi scene, right? Maybe this is part of a... like this. Sorry, y'all. I'm indecisive as I don't know what today. I'm really sort of trying to get something neat here. I don't know if that makes sense. I was trying to do like a how would I do, like, two moons next to each other? Would it just be more like a one moon in front of another moon kind of thing? Would that make more sense? And then maybe change the coloring of it a bit? Like, maybe more of a... that one there. I don't know. I don't know. My brain is sort of frazzled on this. Trying to see how I want this to look or what I want the look of this to be. Yeah, like a maybe off over here to give the perception of like maybe... Kind of like we did in the sci-fi one here. So take it to the back and then forward and then maybe do it more like... Here or something. So Rory, you'll realize, like, I don't know if you know this yet, but I don't really sketch. So sometimes when it comes to doing this stuff, it turns into more of an experimentation than anything. Because, you know... I have an idea. What if we move the boat over? Bear with me a minute. What if we do some sort of a weird landmass back here? Almost like a rocky... And then maybe put some sort of a structure on it. Can't hurt to try it. Let's try it. Copy this. Paste this. Now, we're going to have to change the gradient up, and we can. But let's do this. We'll make this part darker, like this. You see that? 
but we'll take this one out more. And that right there just stepped up the whole thing. Now, obviously the stars would need to go backwards. We could almost treat this like a landmass behind or raising up above the lighthouse to sort of give the perspective of height. Is clearly it would be up there, right? And then we could do sort of, you know, could do something like that. I mean, there's so many different ways to go about this. And then we have the whole, what do we want to do with the water? In terms of, um, do we want to do like any sort of things in the water? <laughs> All right, Rory. Thanks so much, dude. Thanks for the thanks for supporting me, man. I appreciate that, buddy. Have a good one, dude. And I totally understand. I like that. Yep. Okay, cool. Well, let's do the, uh, go to here. A little smaller. Yeah, I like that. I want the boat to be a little smaller to sort of give the perspective that it's coming into the scene and maybe sailing through the scene kind of thing. Now, the only thing I'm torn on is the sky. I want a little more detail in that sky. That's really where I'm conflicted right now. So, let's do that. Let's figure out how we're going to do that. Because I almost want like a haze around the... What the heck is it I'm looking for here? Like a smog? Or like a high-hanging fog or something? How would I make that? How would I do that? I could repeat these patterns here, but then I'm afraid it would almost look like clouds. But I mean, I could do something like this. But I'm really afraid this is going to turn out looking like a cloud. See that? But maybe if I... Did it in a way that it was not a cloud shape. Maybe it would make sense. I don't know. I don't know. I gotta think on that. I gotta think on that. That's a tough one. Because it's one of those I'm sort of... Yeah. I gotta think on that. Let me see here. Two and a half. Let me, uh, let me check one thing real quick. Here. Oh, okay, right there. All right, y'all give me um one second. I'm going to be right back, okay? I'm going to grab a drink and stretch my legs. I'll be right back. All right, we're back. In my view, get rid of this. All right. I think I want to almost treat this like the webs. Me, we had to do webs. Let's try that. Excuse me.
Let's ex see what we'll do like a 10%, like a sort of fucking thing. What are you doing, Frodo? Huh? You running around the house making rockets? That looks weird, but I like it in a, in a weird kind of way. Not what I was intending. Not really. I don't know. Maybe I need to take a break, get some food, and stretch and stuff. I think that's what I might do. Is uh, take a break, get some food, stretch it out, see what I can do here. Because um, I feel like I'm sort of I feel like I'm sort of stuck in the mud here. So let's do that. Let's see if we can find somebody to host, and we will do that. That way I can sort of stretch my legs and kind of move around a bit. Maybe I need to get that blood flow back in my brain, because right now my brain's struggling with what it wants to do. Um, yeah. Let's see, who is on that we want to drop a host? Do -do -do -do. Yeah, we'll go... We'll drop it on Jork. He's playing some, uh... He's playing some Realm Royale. Let's do that. Okay, cool. So, folks, thanks for coming out. Thanks for being here. Thank you for all the support. Thanks for just being involved. I do appreciate each and every one of you. Thanks for the host, the follow. Thanks for the donations on DLive. Thank you, guys. Um, have a great day. I will be live again on Wednesday, where we will be announcing the, um... The first weekly challenge, weekly drawing challenge. So we'll be handling that and looking forward to it. So have a great day. I'll catch y'all later. Be safe. Yeah, that that's Odin. He's running around somewhere. I'm going to get some lunch and let the dogs out and, let, you know, stretch and everything. So because my brain's starting to get a little fried. But thank you guys so much for being here. Good to see everybody.